we'll go ahead and get started, everyone. Welcome to the first webinar by IME on conflict-sensitive education training. I just want to do a sound check and make sure everyone is able to be connected. So down to the right-hand side of the window is WebEx, and click the raised hand to that you can hear me. I can check to make sure everyone is connected. Run a few more. So another minute and see if we can get everybody together. Okay, I think we're waiting for Ashley, Brittany, Bert, P.S., Olivia. Please raise your hand if you can hear me. And for successfully join audio conference, um, please press six to new line. And to speak, you can mute by pressing hashtag pound sign six. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. It looks like maybe a few people have stepped away from their desk. Uh, if you are having any challenges with the technology, feel free to chat me. Okay, um, you can touch me at any point with a question by either turning on audio or raising the hand. We're a few minutes to just connect to video. There you go. Okay, turn it off. Okay, so we'll go ahead and, and get started on the INE webinar on conflict sensitive education training. Um, to give you a little bit of a background on this presentation, it is the first model in eight modules that have been developed by INE conflict sensitive education. And initially, the presentation was developed um, to be a very participatory process with a training group of about about 35 to 40 people. I'm going to modify that slightly in order to fit it into this webinar platform. Our presence should take about 45 minutes, and afterwards we'll have about 15 minutes for questions. Can I click the green check mark if you just heard the introduction that I gave? So it looks like we're connected with a few. At the end of this module, um, I hope that you all would have an understanding of why conflict-sensitive education is important, the three-part definition of conflict-sensitive education, know when conflict-sensitive education should be used or is applicable, and be familiar with the INE conflict-sensitive education path. Before I go any further, I'll give an introduction of myself. I'm Cynthia Kuhn, and I am currently the project coordinator Coordinator for Capacity Development on Conflict-Sensitive Education for INEE. I have over 12 years of experience working on topics related to education and conflict in regions of the world, um, countries Romania, Kosovo, South Sudan, 
um, apartheid Palestinian territories, South Sudan, Liberia, and others. And I'm this through the presentation and a few of to interest if you have any questions. So expensive of education is important. Uh, three reasons here. First, uh, because access to quality education is a human right. This is documented in the international political commitments, such as the Millennium Development Goals, the Education for All Goals, and many other international documents, such as the Universal Declaration of Rights. Know that this right to education is not being fully realized. For yourselves, do you know what percentage of the world's total 57 million out of school primary children live in conflict affected fragile states? 50%, approximately 28.5 million children. This is according to a recent report by UNESCO called Children Battling to Go to School. And the conflict sensitive education is really important at this time. There's been pretty, plenty of documentation recently about the two phases of education, meaning that education can contribute to conflict and it also contribute to peace. And we education actors in conflict-affected and fragile countries need to be aware of this bi-directional relationship, doing our own due diligence to ensure that the education programs we support can contribute to conflict. So let's do slides looking at this bi-directional relationship between education and conflict in a little bit more detail. When you look at the affected context, education can reinforce and prolong the conflict as well as reduce tension and strengthens people's capacities to disengage from conflict by promoting values such as tolerance and social cohesion. Think to yourself for a minute about being context. And on one example of the way that education programming or education at the stir level contributed to conflict. Welcome. It sounds like a few other people called in. Please hold your mute your line. And to, to consider your working context and the education programming can contribute to conflict. So look on, now that you've considered your own context, and we were considering how education can contribute to conflict. Are there these dynamics, education affects intergroup relationships, how education at the ground level or sector level can affect market supply chain to the purchase of education goods? Participants that yet muted the line, just please press star six. There's a lot of feedback on the call. Did you consider the way that education legitimizes actors and agendas by the way the curriculum is designed? That it can also incentivize continuation of the status quo by reflecting the social structures that exist? And the way that education affects knowledge, attitudes, and values. Through each of these and give an example of the way education can contribute to conflict. For example, for relationships, having teachers away from a local public school and or run a temporary learning space, a refugee camp, or a school in the area controlled by one faction of the conflict, expecting it to serve children from both sides of the conflict. So these actions could contribute to the conflict. Okay. Examples for markets and supply chains. If you choose to procure school furniture from factories in neighboring countries rather than from local suppliers, this could create tensions with the local suppliers. Or at a local level, external aid agencies provide funds for education. They can get money for the national government to spend for military purposes. When we talk about legitimization of actors and this, of the way education programs could contribute to conflict would be hiring a security firm aligned with a faction of the conflict to the individual agencies' comp housing or offices, or maybe promoting a language of instruction that corresponds with 
with one ethnic group or one historic colonial power. And another way that you could contribute to conflict that would legit certain actors or agendas would be conducting emergency response planning meetings in a non-local language. That's yes. yes. I have a question. I'm early. An example of the fourth bullet hurt here, incentivizing continuation of the status quo. When actors benefit financially from the increase in market value of the housing, water, or petrol, due to of humanitarian agencies, they have an interest in perpetuating the conflict context that they're benefiting financially. And, the, and this is usually where we are, it's most easy to come up with an example of how education contributes to conflict. Knowledge affects knowledge, or education affects knowledge, attitudes, values. For example, a teacher ignores students, marginalized groups, and gives preferential treatment to students from the group in power. Or the curriculum refers to certain groups the story of language. All of these are examples of ways education at the progress of the sector level contribute to conflict. The education is a right for all children, but we know that 50% of out-of-school children and CAFs are not being ensured that right. We want to work to make that happen, but we also know that providing education in these contexts can both contribute to peace or conflict. How do we know for sure that the programs we're support are not causing conflict? Specifically, what do we need to know about our context in order to ensure that, education, that our education programs and that strategies that we're using to deliver education do not make conflict worse. We monitor our programs and their conflict sensitivity over the life of the program. The education practitioner in answering some of these questions, i.e., the Interagency Network for Education and Emergencies, developed the INEE Conflict Sensitive Education Pact. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if you've heard of INEE or worked with them in the past. Okay, I see. Looks like quite a few people. Well, for those who haven't worked with INEE, this is a global network of over 2,000 practitioners and students and teachers and staff from a variety of agencies, both years non-governmental, local um, NGOs, donors, governments, and universities. 180 countries together the humanitarian and development spectrum to ensure all persons have the right to quality education in a safe learning environment. And this material that I'm presenting to you today, as well as the additional seven modules that are part of this pack, were vetted by a group of these INEE members and tested in 50 different locations by NEE members, and all of that feedback was incorporated into the training module. A long history of developing tools that are requested by practitioners. It's a demand-driven organization. And some of the tools that they've created are the, is this NEE Conflict Sensitive Education Pack. Three tools in the pack, the guiding principle, the note, and action tools. And each of these tools in a little bit more detail later on in the presentation. So far, we've been talking a lot about conflict sensitive education in the past few slides, but what do we add, what do we mean? And slide represents the three step definition of conflict sensitive education that was adapted from a website and the work of conflict sensitivity Org. And that is to understand the conflict context. Check and assess information on the conflict environment, and it may include who's in conflict and why, as well as things like the economic and political environment that surround the conflict or involved in the conflict. So it's to analyze the two interaction between the conflict context and the end programs of the policy. The education program parameters or details, such as who hired and what's being delivered, 
and how each of those activities may influence the conflict actors and dynamics. And the first step is to minimize the negative impact and maximize the positive impact to education policies and programming. Yeah. Colleague who hasn't muted the line to please press press six. We're getting the feedback on the call. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna minute and write this down in the chat in case someone is not listening. I'm not Okay, hearing that it's, my voice is quite quiet, I'm going to try to speak directly into the microphone a little bit better. You to click the green check mark if you can hear my voice clearly now. Okay, and then please go ahead and unclick the green check mark and the hand so that I know which responses are pertaining to the questions asked. Thank you. Okay, now let's look at each of these steps in detail. Step one is to understand the conflict context. So what do we need to know about the conflict context? to inform the way that we design our education program. What questions might we want to ask if we wanted to gather in this information? Actors, dynamics, profiles, and causes. These are questions we refer to generally as the conflict analysis. Those are those engaged in or affected by the conflict. Causes are the issues over which people are in conflict. And that's for the trends and phases of conflict evolving over time. Mm. The problem is the history of context yeah. that surrounds the conflict, such as the political, oh, economic, social, cultural, environmental, mm. or security. Mm. Ask our colleague Oluga to please press mute on the phone. Oh, God, sorry. Stop it. Can you press six to meet the line? Hope that clears the audio just a little bit. Move on to the next slide about conflict analysis, which is the first step of conflict sensitive education. So the conflict analysis. The analysis provides critical information about the context in which we work. It is the decisions on program content and process to ensure that we minimize our contribution to conflict. And that is itself the conflict analysis can be helpful because it helps provide a shared understanding of the conflict context across actors, education, peace building, or other. So conflict analysis gives us information that we need to decide our program details such as where we're going to work, when we're going to work, whom we're going to hire, who will deliver the, pro the project, and how and what we will be delivering. And to think about your work co working context. Can anyone think of a situation where the causes and issues of the conflict change your program design? In the assessment that I was working on for South Sudan, Initially, the program to target areas for spaces that had low enrollment and that were able. But G developed in targeting only agricultural areas of a country to map directly onto one ethnic group. Thus, the NGO proceeded in that way. They would be contributing to the conflict by providing services for only one side of the faction, for only the conflict, excuse me. After 
conflict analysis, they realized that the agricultural areas were inhabited by one side of the group and that they needed to consider a way to provide services to both sides in order to not exacerbate conflict and so the change in their strategy. A question from Lydia and Laura asking if the audio is working and to respond quickly. The next step in conflict-sensitive education is looking at the interaction between education and the context. Which specifically that we need to analyze in this step? Is it who? What were the criteria for choosing some people as the target group and not others? Did this criteria bring people together or divide people? Done in a participatory or not? We consider what. How do education strategies affect the local human resource and education supply market? Did what we deliver contribute to connecting people across the fashion lines or divide people? The process for establishing this project. Who did we hire? What were the criteria for hiring? Was it a transparent and participatory process? Then let's look at perceptions. Should people in our programming area, perceive our staff and our projects. Procurement of supplies. From who did we purchase supplies? Is the school construction materials or the teacher? Who were hired? Which teacher not hired and why? And how does this affect the perception of our agency or the conflict dynamics? This overwhelming list of questions. Help us move through this reflection process, i.e., education pack includes the reflection tool. The reflection tool is a tool like you see on the slide here, and on the first column is a list of reflection questions. As you can see, the first one, such as have education stakeholders analyze the conflict context and how proposed education programs may interact with that context. Column is where you would write your response at the time that you're doing the assessment. And column in the row there list the resources that can use some strategies to respond to that issue. For example, if you find that you haven't done a conflict analysis in that area for improvement, you can see here you could find guidance on how to do that in the in the INEE conflict sensitive education guidance note. Section Community Participation Standard 1, or the Standard 1 on assessment. So this is listed here in clear section of the AE Conflict Sensitive Education Guidance Note. This tool and the guidance note and the guiding principles that we'll see in the in a couple of slides are all available to you on the INE website for download, and I'll give you a link to that. Let me just a minute to answer this question. Oh. All right, so I responded to a few of the questions. I'm hoping that the people who are having trouble connecting can using the numbers that are pasted above in the chat. There's the conference code there. It's usually more reliable than connecting through the voice on the computer. Okay, so we talked about step one, understanding the conflict context through doing a conflict analysis. Analysis. Step step two, how to analyze the two-way interaction between conflict context and education programs and policies. And this reviewed one of the INE conflict sensitive education pack tools that can help us with step two, and that's the reflection tool. 
through step three. Mm -hmm. Step three, the research for looking at how to select education strategies that do not contribute to conflict. A guidance note on conflict-sensitive education. Now, as I was just mentioning, this guidance note is a small booklet, and it's organized according to the five domains of the INEE minimum standards. These are the foundational standards that include topics such as analysis and monitoring and evaluation. There's different components of qualification, such as system learning environment, teaching learning, teachers, teachers education personnel, and education policy. So in this guidance note, you can find strategies that are conflict sensitive according to these five categories. So let's look at, at an example. For example, if when you conflict analysis, you find rather than reflecting the diversity of the learners, the course is drawn from one language and one ethnic group, and this is an intergroup tension. Conflict sensitive education strategies might you want to consider to adapt programs. One would be to start providing equitable training to teachers from different backgrounds and from different regions of the country. And also, you might consider to use incentive schemes to let and that underrepresented teachers, such as women and teachers from some of their ethnic groups that aren't represented, are encouraged to apply and participate. Okay, comment from our colleague in Nigeria that they're having trouble connecting. I'll just send a note to Sandra here that we can follow up afterwards if she's still having trouble. The second example, if your conflict analysis found that pre-service teacher training is segregated by ethnic groups and the content includes nothing on values such as or difference or social cohesion, you may consider contributing to the teacher training program by providing some training content that includes human rights or inclusive pedagogy addressing historical memory and the way that history is presented in the textbook. This type of curriculum review can be a very long-term process, or it can be something that you do at the program level to supplement the existing curriculum in a participatory within the context that you're working. She's going upstairs. This is why I'm here. We've reviewed some of the key actions and the three steps of conflict-sensitive education as a process. We're going to move on to where and when conflict-sensitive education is applicable. So talk here about the different phases of conflict. Conflict education is applicable across all phases of conflict. <laughs> At this stage, that is when parties' interests are incompatible, but does it then acknowledge you bring conflict-sensitive strategies prevented and that, for, that promote tolerance in the classroom, for example, or inclusive hiring processes that are bringing people together across potential faction lines. The conflict escalating conflict occurs when parties' incompatible interests are recognized and they're pushed and voiced. The conflict occurs when parties act with violence to destroy other parties' ability to pursue their own interests. So conflict-sensitive education strategies might we employ at the acute conflict outbreak? For the rapid assessments that we're doing to provide education in emergencies, we have questions relating to intergroup relations to identify actors and possible triggers of conflict. Information can inform both our recruitment for who will deliver our program, but also our targeting education beneficiaries. The same phase, the violent and destructive conflict has subsided, but there's still political tension. The conflict reconstruction phase, the conflict has subsided and societal structures are being redeveloped. 
we provide conflicts of education in the de-escalation phase. For example, at the national level, we could identify diverse perceptions of how education contributed to the conflict and made education strategies that revise to not repeat error. And also can include in our teacher training program around peace building and tolerance and social cohesion. There are, there are a few resources listed on how to do these activities in my e conflict sensitive guidance notes. Sensitive education applies across all types of work. We tend to work in flows of either humanitarian or development or peace building, but conflict sensitive education can cut across all of these. For example, across cross sectoral work with water and sanitation, school health and nutrition. And those programs are going to include the delivery of knowledge, which be it capacity building, training, formal or non-formal education. And delivery of knowledge should be done in a way that aims to minimize the contribution to violence. So error of knowledge can benefit from having a moment of reflection about who is being tar targeted to receive that knowledge, who is being excluded, and how it's being delivered, and how that relates to the conflict dynamic. For example, the location of the school water point or a lane can be done Discussed in immunity and run by the findings of its analysis, avoid being placed on one side of the faction line, creating conflicts between groups. Humanitarian work, whether responding to a humanitarian emergency with temporary learning spaces, development context to education management information systems, understanding the conflict context first is critical in order to ensure that education will not contribute to the conflict dynamic. Imperative that education be part of any peace building effort if transformational changes to occur in the society. And education actors can work to advocate for education being part of peace building plans or peace building programs in the post conflict reconstruction phase. Conflict education also applies across all levels of education. Think of working context. Can you think of any examples of conflict sensitive education at the classroom level? For example, how a teacher can model inclusive and tolerant behavior and teach students from differing groups to do the same. Or a teacher could self assess her own biases, mindful not to act on those during teaching. As a discipline instead of corporal, violent, or humiliating punishment. And the teacher ensure equal level of attention and support to the students from different groups, girls and boys, and to promote equal opportunities. What levels of conflict sensitive education at the community level? For example, volunteer teachers can be recruited and selected in a transparent way with the community participation. Or parent teacher associations can engage and where the school welcomes all children regardless the sex, race, or language. Of materials, as we mentioned, can be adapted to include images, areas that reflect the diversity of students. And it can establish zones of peace or community agreements that protect the schools from attacks or occupation by armed groups or recruitment of children to participate in armed groups. If I think of any examples of conflict-sensitive education at the system level, at the education system level, the Minister of Education could conduct a mass communication campaign to inform learners and learner communities about new education policy decisions and processes, why certain decisions are being made, and invite participation and input for the central city and then the peripheral areas and the rural areas. Education providers, including the Ministry of Education, can support equitable distribution of resources, of education resources, Regardless of their identity group, you could also use the teacher code of conduct to develop them in a participatory way and adapt those as national policy to encourage teachers to avoid using cruel punishment, for example, or to encourage the qual equitable quality education provision by ensuring teacher standards. For example, at the structural level, system level, the Ministry of Education could ensure that non-discriminatory policies are in place and ensure promotion 
and for the implementation of those policies in all regions across the country. A few concrete examples. Kichala, some mention has arisen between the Latinos and the Mayans. And the rest, when teachers allowed Mayan children to wear their traditional clothes to school, to appeal, rather than standard Navy blue school uniform. Not only did this address a grievance of the Mayan students, but it also allowed children the opportunity to learn about difference and tolerance and with one another. And at the school level, in Nepal, the local residents were using schools as recruiting grounds for the program, the community is a variety of community members and the local armed group in order to discuss a way to protect the school community from occupation and recruitment. It in the school code of conduct that was an agreement between all the community members and the armed group to use school for conflict purposes. And a third example of conflict sensitive education strategy at the policy level in Liberia, a recent conflict analysis that control of power was preventing communities from rural areas to participate in making processes and this being conflict. So a quoted group of education actors decided to collect opinions and manage five consultations around the country the capital city, and to allow for a wide range of voices to regarding the relationship of education and this peace building. And then later, you use these five consultations to inform the design of the education program. And so I want to share with you the third resource in the INE Conflict Sensitive Education Path, the guidance of the poll. Some mission actors have asked for a one-page simple document that they can use in advocacy and at the policy level that outlines in a nutshell or a summary what are the six principles of conflict sensitive education tool, which I'll also make available to you at the end of this lecture, outlines these six principles. For people that have found this tool useful to use it checklist for advocacy points to cover when making um, uh, when making or um, communications with donors. Or they've used these six principles in requests um, for any principles in the proposal is something that the agencies do and adhere to. Advocated for the inclusion of these six principles in national education policy. Using principles can also be used as a donor requirement for proposals. So all these six principles could be used standard of practices to which all of here to ensure that our education programming does not contribute to conflict. Briefly, I'll just discuss each of these six principles. The first is two best, and this best relates to the first step of conflict-sensitive education. Here we want to make sure to develop an education conflict analysis that forms the education intervention. So for sensitive education, the first step of conflict analysis is key. A second principle is to do no harm. So we are that the education program or policy doesn't favor one group over the other or put gender or social inequities or related to promote hatred or exclusion. The goal is to prioritize prevention that students are protected and the education personnel infrastructure and learning environments are also protected from attacks and from violence. The fourth goal is to promote equity and the holistic development of the child. And here we want to ensure that the education and services are distributed as equitably as possible across identity groups and ethnic groups and to make a special effort to reach those that have been marginalized and that potential driver of conflict. This is to stabilize, rebuild, and build the education system. So in strengthening education institutional capacities at the national and local level. 
the sensible treatment partner should act fast with the change and stay engaged beyond short-term support. So the service gap is a common driver of conflict and then be an unintended result of the gap between our humanitarian education response and the development response. So it's up to make sure that we eliminate those gaps and act fast and stage beyond the short-term support to contributing to conflict. So in summary, conflict-sensitive education is context-specific from the findings of a participatory conflict analysis. A generic, externally defined, or imposed list of the be done. Education is an ongoing approach to the how and the what of education delivery. For example, um, delivering textbooks, but who is hiring to print those textbooks and who is hiring to write the curriculum and how do they interact with the conflict. Conflictation is an approach at all levels of education from up to the structural level, includes tools and much more. Conflict sensitive education is quality education that proactively seeks to minimize contribution to conflict. It is peace building a peace building curriculum at the classroom level. It is simply quality education delivered in a conflict context and it is simply a national policy issue. To forward on delivering conflict sensitive education across the humanitarian development term, I offer these three tools which we've covered today. The guide principles of the one page summary of six tools for a conflict sensitive education. These can be used to raise awareness and adopt the standard of practice. This we discussed is the INE conflict sensitive education guidance note. Booklet of around 80 pages, I think, can be used as a reference tool or to generally build capacity on key concepts and strategies around conflict sensitive education, or according to the INEE five domains of minimum standards. And finally, the reflection tool is a list of questions across each stage of the program cycle that can be used to assess, monitor, or evaluate programs. The conflict sensitive education pack, the three tools that I was just discussing, can be found on the website listed in front of you. And conflict sensitive education training materials, including this module and the seven modules that accompany it, as well as the participatory activities, which we cannot do in our format, um, that can a session with about 35 to 40 participants, are all available at that website. Additional information. Tools the INE can be found on the broader website. If you have specific questions about conflict sensitive education or about this training, you can email me at ESE training at IE site.org. I'll write down here in the chat box so you can see. And then about 15 minutes to open up for questions. So I'd like to write questions by looking to see who has a raised hand. And I'll on those raised hands from the top of the participants down to the bottom. And we'll wait through the questions at the table until 10 o'clock when the session will close. Thank you so much for your participation. This is the first webinar we've delivered on conflict sensitive education. And I look forward to hearing any feedback you have by emailing the email I shared in the chat box. Pound six, and the first one I'll on for a question is Austin Bayam. Do you have a question? Okay, asking your question, I'm unable to hear you. You have to unmute your phone. I'll to move down. Are there any hands here? Mark? Uh, 
Okay, is also on mute. Ty, you have a question? Okay. Uh, any questions there? So now I'm going to go down to the. Look at any questions that have been listed there. Let's see. <laughs> Okay, the question about the link between conflict sense of education and peace building from Monica, a UNICEF Uganda office. Go ahead and share this slide. Conflict sensitivity and are linked and mutually supportive. Can allow for stronger education systems. Education can support the political transformation that is needed for peace. For this training and the INE conflict sensitive education pack in general, conflict and peace building are considered distinct but related approaches. For this training we're focused on assessing the unintended consequences of education and using the education program or policy to minimize its contributions to conflict. Revis this conflict sensitivity. Conflictivity does not imply education organizations must have peace building mandate, but advise that education organizations should deliver education mandate and it does not contribute to conflict. Finally, this can be described as using the first bullet there that for peace building, the focus may be to work directly on conflict and put sensitive education and learning education in conflict. Conflict, we want to make sure it doesn't contribute to that conflict. Between the two, education strategies and peace building strategies, we also recognize that they're very interlinked. Maybe you can think of relationships between and such interlinkages. For example, education strategies can be incorporated into peace building strategies, just of social cohesion and peaceful conflict resolution at the community and national level. Central prevention and peace building are used by the UN to highlight work in different places in the conflict cycle. But in essence, the actual approach can be quite similar. And the the co-definition that's provided is that it is a multi-dimensional range of measures to reduce the risk of a lapse or relapse into violent conflict, affecting both the underlying causes and the consequences of conflict. So if you have that definition of peace building, you can see it definitely has linkages with the definition of conflict sensitivity that we're using. In conflict sensitive education is primarily focused on ensuring that we first do no harm by the way that we're delivering our education program. And so we've made sure that, then we look to include strategies that are focused on peace building. Our first mandate is to deliver education programs in a way that does not harm. So um, that addresses one of the questions that we have in the chat box. And um, yes, I see, Monica, that your question, your question was written. And I'm looking for questions from Nigeria by text. And then I have a, quest, a question here. We have been the location I found it difficult to participate. This session can be downloaded. So I'll write back to our um, Nigerian colleagues directly. Are there any other general questions that, that participants would like to cover? Okay, question here from Misty. Just clarify the conflict sense of education pack does not include actual lessons that teachers might use but guidance principles, tools, and advocacy materials for setting appropriate programs. Yes, Missy, that, that is correct. The correct title is the Conflict Sensitivity Pack, and not a curriculum. Uh, it is focused for managers, um, particularly at the mid-level, for managing education programs in conflict-affected contexts. Instead, there are a list of resources at the end of each of the two modules 
um, for greater detail. And specific question would be the module on teaching and learning, kinds of education strategies for teaching and learning. That could include a lot of um, in classroom practices. And there are slides with a list of resources um, that get to this question of specific curriculum um, in the training module. And if you're interested, you can send an email at uh, the email is listed above, CSC training at inesite.org, and we have happy to send you the specific um, live resources that we've collected. And I see a question here from Fatima. When schools are under direct attack? So these are some of the questions that are getting into uh, greater detail on context-sensitive education. So first, I just want to reiterate that this is the first of eight models. Uh, this is a broad overview of the concept of conflict sensitivity. If you're looking at specific strategies for different sections of education work, such as um, curriculum review or um, hiring and remuneration of teachers um, or Advocate, advocacy for um, education policy, each of those to topics are covered individually by their own module. One of those modules is about access to safe learning environments, and it includes the topics that Fatima has, has listed here about schools directly under attack. Some of the strategies mentioned in that module, and also in the INA guidance note, which has the same name, are um, items said. Um, schools of peace or codes of conduct um, these are based on case study research that is, have been in countries like the Philippines and Nepal about the benefits of community organized protection structures around school environment. Um, there's quite a bit of literature on these and I'm happy to share those with you. If you'd like to email me directly, I can send you the link to those materials. I'll well, just wait a few more minutes to see if anyone else has a question they'd like to write into the chat box. And finally, I'm going to paste in the link um, which you see on the slide, but I'll, I'll just emphasize the link that has the full training module set. I wanted to download any of these resources to replicate with your group, and if you would like support in replicating this training or sharing the material, and of course, um, email me directly and I'll be happy to, to support you. So give me one moment. I'll copy that link here. And I'm pasting it into the chat box now. This is where all of the training materials can be downloaded. Okay, there are no more questions. You can look for a recording of this. Training, um, which I will post on the link above in those days. And please feel free to email me with further questions or requests for additional resources. Thank you for your participation. Thank you. The leader has disconnected. The prince will be terminated in two minutes.